Now, acting short is a tough racket, and certainly not for the faint of stomach. The overwhelming majority of actors do not have the luxury of being able to pick and choose every single project coming their way, because after all, acting is still a job and they need to pay the bills. But whether these actors were slumming it for a paycheck or simply delivered a misguided performance, each of the talents that we're talking about today undeniably turned in their worst work to date in these recent movies. From certain stars plumbing the lowest depths, to some of our finest dramatic performers bungling an attempt to establish themselves as a blockbuster star, these roles just simply were not it. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 actors who just gave their worst ever movie performances. Number 10. Gal Gadot, Death on the Nile Now, Death on the Nile may not be a great movie, but it's a fun time, powered by the firm efforts of a solid ensemble cast. That is, except for Gal Gadot. Now, while Gadot is hardly the most charismatic or naturally persuasive of performers, she's proven in the likes of Wonder Woman and Red Notice that she can bring a fun and charming presence to the fore. But that's sadly not the case here, where her turn as ill-fated heiress Lynette is carved straight out of bloody wood. Now, Gadot obviously looks the part, but her flat, affect-free line readings evoke the vibe of a mirthless contractual obligation. Yes, we've all had fun bagging on her for that wretched line reading of enough champagne to fill the Nile, but at least there's some spirit and feeling to it. Elsewhere, much of Godot's performance sticks to a dull monotone, ensuring her sexual chemistry with Army Hammer isn't remotely convincing, especially compared to the sizzling energy with co-star Emma Mackey. And so many were left revealed when, spoiler, Lynette is murdered halfway through through. In a sea of skilled actors, Godot was demonstrably the worst, and has never been so thoroughly out of her league as a result. Number 9. Liam Neeson, Blacklight Fatigue has well and truly set in with Liam Neeson's brand of post-taken action thrillers, which, while generally at least watchable, finally dipped into outright trash territory with Blacklight. A rare, universally panned action joint from Neeson, Blacklight is an exhaustingly generic thriller hampered not only by a slack script and feckless direction, but also Neeson's own sluggish performance in the lead role. As FBI fixer Travis Block, it's painfully clear that the 70-year-old Neeson's enthusiasm for these roles has all but evaporated, and he's basically just collecting a huge paycheck for a few weeks of gruff chit-chat and pretending to beat down men a fraction of his own age. Though Neeson has typically delivered solidly grizzled performances in even his worst action vehicles to date, in Blacklight the transactional nature of his appearance couldn't seem more transparent. This is a tired actor who desperately needs to quit the action beat, yet with a number of genre films at various stages of development on his IMDb profile, things could, and probably will, certainly get worse. Number 8. Mickey Rourke, War Hunt Though it seemed like Mickey Rourke's flagging career was revived by his Oscar-nominated turn in 2008's The Wrestler, after his appearance in Iron Man 2, he quickly slid back into near-obscurity. Appearing in a glut of forgettable genre films, most of them sent direct to video or, nowadays, straight to streaming. Rourke's latest such offering is War Hunt, a supernatural horror film set in World War II, with Rourke doing what many aging action stars do these days, showing up for a few minutes every now and again so that his face can legally be plastered all over the movie's cover art. Rourke plays the eyepatch-wearing allied soldier Major Johnson in what's surely the laziest, most shameless paycheck-grabbing role of his career. The film is bad any way you slice it, but Rourke's performance feels like the director used the very first take every single time, suggesting the possibility that this might have actually been the only option. Like Calculon, he only does one take. Had Rourke put any energy into this at all, he could have been fun, but instead it's painfully obvious that he just wanted to get paid for the bare minimum amount of effort possible. Number 7. Jessica Chastain, The 355 now, Jessica Chastain is a phenomenal actress with a bevy of quality roles to her name, and in recent times she's been trying to establish herself as more than an accomplished dramatic performer. She's also trying her hand at being a kick-ass femme fatale as well. And so, Chastain starred in the female-led, globe-trotting action flick for 355 earlier this year, a project she pitched to writer-director Simon Kinberg while the pair worked together on Dark Phoenix. Chastain plays CIA officer Mason Mace Brown, and despite the film being her passion project from the ground, up, you barely know it from her bizarrely one-note, totally forgettable performance. Now, granted, the script is not good at all, but Chastain fails to bring much gravitas to it regardless, nor is she able to shine in the choppily assembled action sequences. Nobody is good in this movie, admittedly, but while Chastain has elevated mediocre actioners with her fiery presence in the past, namely 2020's Ava, here she seems bafflingly disinterested in a film that she was directly responsible for getting made. Perhaps she was aiming for cool 
detachment and just simply missed the mark, but she's never seemed this lacking in enthusiasm before, and hopefully we won't see it again. Number 6. Chris Pratt – Jurassic World Dominion Chris Pratt has built his brand on being a charming goofball, as has proven so successful in both the Marvel and Lego Movie franchises. Quite why he was hired to portray such a joyless nothing burger of a character in the Jurassic World trilogy, though, is anyone's guess. While his Owen Grady possessed faint flicks of charismatic promise in the first two movies, in the recently released threequel Dominion, his lifeless performance fails to render Owen as anything more than a plot-motivating prop. Compared to Bryce Dallas Howard, who isn't exactly saddled with a prized character herself, but certainly gives it her all, Pratt practically mails his performance in from another continent. This is a film where Pratt's screen presence consists primarily of raising his hand to calm a dinosaur, something that's decidedly less iconic or cool than the filmmakers think. While no cast member survives Dominion's onslaught of stupidity entirely intact, unlike his co-stars, Pratt apparently can't even pretend to be engaged with the material. Pratt's lackluster, totally forgettable work here is hardly going to ruin his stock as an actor, but one suspects that he might be happy to let this franchise go after this. Number 5. Charlie Plummer – Moonfall Look, nobody was ever going to deliver Oscar-worthy work in Moonfall, but among the squandered ensemble is an especially maddening performance from up-and-comer Charlie Plummer. Plummer, who previously wowed in All the Money in the World and Lean on Pete, seems completely lost in the role of Brian's troubled son Sonny. Now, it doesn't help that Sonny is one of Moonfall's most perfunctory, unnecessary characters and his subplot largely feels like a waste of time, but even so, Plummer looks totally checked out throughout this thing. There's a glazed-over quality to his eyes in basically every single scene of a disinterested actor literally thinking about anything else while going through the motions to complete their contractual duties. While you can't really blame an actor of Plummer's obvious talents for struggling to disguise his lack of enthusiasm in such a blatant paycheck role, the 23-year-old carries himself here with all the cynical, weary tiredness of an actor several times older than himself. Kind of like a young Liam Neeson or Mickey Rourke, even. Number 4. Oscar Isaac – Big Gold Brick Now, black comedy Big Gold Brick at least gets a few points for being really, really weird, and for amassing an oddly distinguished cast that includes Andy Garcia, Emery Cohen, and Oscar Isaac. Isaac appears in a single seven-minute scene as murderous kingpin Anselm, rocking a sharp suit and decidedly less sharp accent that can best be described as European adjacent. While it's fair to say that Isaac is being an intentional ham throughout his brief role, his work here has a rather desperate I'm doing a friend a favor energy. And that's most likely the truth given that Isaac is good pals with the director, having previously collaborated on two short films. In addition to his cameo, which he most likely did for free or SAG scale at most, Isaac is also an executive producer on this film, evidently hoping that his sheer presence would lend more credibility and profile to the lo-fi project. Yet given the thorough panning the film received from critics, the consensus is that Isaac's involvement did not help at all. Number 3. Tracy Letts – Deep War Water. Having won both a Pulitzer Prize and two Tony Awards for his writing and acting, Tracy Letts is one hell of a talent. While his film credits are relatively sparse, he's given memorable performances in the likes of The Lovers, Lady Bird, The Post, Ford vs Ferrari, and Little Women. But it's anyone's guess quite what he's doing in the Ben Affleck starring erotic thriller Deep Water, where he plays Don Wilson, a writer who suspects protagonist Vic of being a serial killer. Granted, the script for this thing is a goddamn mess, but even so, Letts his off-kilter, tonally jarring performance can't decide if it's an exercise in scenery-chewing self-awareness or not. For most of the movie, Letts plays a pretty typical dull foil for the murderous Vic. Yet in the third act of the movie, he catches Vic disposing of a dead body and cranks the overacting up to 11. As Don frantically flees in his car while Vic inexplicably gives chase on a bicycle, Letts plays the scene as a pure campy farce, shouting, God damn fucking autocorrect at his phone as he attempts to inform his wife of Vic's guilt while driving his car. It's hilarious for sure, but the absolute intention of Letts' performance isn't ever fully clear. Either way, it's surely one of the worst things ever committed to film by a Pulitzer Prize-winning individual. Number 2. Tom Hanks – Elvis no matter what your opinion is on Baz Luhrmann's hyperactive directorial style, there's little denying the brilliance of Austin Butler's performance as Elvis Presley in his recently released biopic. Yet while Butler is already courting Oscar buzz for his astonishing performance, a Razzie nomination just might be in store for a most unexpected co-star, that being Tom Hanks. Hanks is of course one of the most beloved actors ever, and throughout his storied career has proven extremely reliable, typically giving acceptable performances even in the worst movies of his 
his career. But his turn as Elvis's manager Colonel Tom Parker in this film is a baffling miscalculation from start to finish. First and foremost, Hank is blatantly miscast as the Dutch music mogul. But because Warner Brothers evidently wanted an A-list name in the role, Hanks was hired instead of a lesser known character actor more naturally suited for the part. The prospect of Tom Bloody Hanks being the worst part of any movie seems completely ludicrous, and yet his excessively mannered, profoundly weird performance just ends up stealing attention away from Butler's superb work as Elvis. And number one, Olwen Fuery. Texas Chainsaw Massacre In Netflix's recent sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Irish veteran actress Olwen Fuery played an aged, apparently battle-hardened version of the film's first protagonist, Sally. Fuery, a remarkable performer who in 2020 was ranked on the Irish Times' list of Ireland's greatest film actors, is undoubtedly slumming it here with a blatant paycheck role, one that admittedly gives her almost nothing to work with. The intent was clearly to give Sally a belated reinvention in the vein of Laurie Strode in 2018's Halloween sequel, but Sally is so thinly presented here that she barely feels like a character at all, let alone the same one that we met in the original movie. Again, the script isn't doing her any favours, but she never once convinces us that Sally is this badass survivalist capable of taking on Leatherface, and so it's more comical than shocking when she's slaughtered by him at the end of the movie. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 actors who just gave their worst ever movie performances. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And if you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Or you can swing by Instagram, where it's the same handle, RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.